All right, so today we're going to start putting together the front spindles for Wide Fox, and that will go into the front suspension going to Wide Fox, which I'll show you. There's going to be some differences between which spindles to use and why you want to use uh, certain ones for what your setup is. So let's go into each of those pieces, and I'll show you what I'm doing for the front of the wide body. So after you saw the rear end build, you know I was going to go to a 5 lock. Now I'm using a stock K member off of the 92 that I wrecked that I dismantled and now I'm putting a lot of the pieces in here. Because of that, uh, the two options I had available was the uh, 96 to 04 spindles or the 94 to 95. With the stock K member, the 94 to 95 is the best to use because the 96 to 04 will give you suspension geometry that causes a lot of issue with bump steer. If you're using something like a relocated uh, lower control arm pocket, maybe like something on a Maxim Motorsports K member or another brand, you might be able to go with the 96 to 04. So all the parts that I originally got for Wide Fox was off a 97 GT. So 97 falls within 96 to 04, Stock K member in those, no bueno. So then I sourced a set of 94, 95 spindles off a of GT, and what I got, well, they were kind of mixed. So the 97 GT parts, I knew I couldn't use this spindle because it requires bump steer, but they had great backing plates, or the, the dust covers, I guess you call them. Also on the 97s, because the spindles are not uh, the older style where you can take the bearings in and out, they're more of a simple replacement unit itself, they're actually turned pretty well, so they're in good shape. I just need different spindles. Now the 94, 95 spindles I got, which I was hoping had good pieces on it for the dust covers, they're not. The uh, person I bought them from actually cut them all up. I don't know if he decided to do that because of taking it apart or what. Either way, I need to change these out, which will require drilling out the rivets. There's three rivets on it. And then this hub isn't so bad, but the other side doesn't even spin. Like they're left out in the rain and they become rust locked. So now some of you might be wondering what are the differences between the 9604 to the 9495. The biggest difference you're going to notice is this straight on where the uh, rack and pinion is going to connect to. Straight piece is on the 96 to 04. The 94, 95 you can see kind of has a bend in it. Biggest difference if you ever notice in the salvage yard, depending on which one you want, you just got to know which one you're looking for either way. Otherwise, the spindles are going to be the same. Okay, so since the desk covers are actually held on by three rivets, they need to be basically drilled out or cut out. So I figured, since I have a drill press, I'll just go ahead and use that. So I kind of chucked up the uh, spindle itself. So I've got one of the 9495s with the cut up desk cover on it. And I'm just going to use a quarter inch drill bit, which will basically take out this rivet here just to drill it. Use a little bit of cutting oil, let the drill do the work for me. That way it keeps me from being on my hands and knees on the ground. And I already did one that way, and it is terrible. So I'm going to do it this way using uh, a little bit of equipment and time and let machines do the work for me. All right, so now all of the uh, brake rotor covers, dust covers, whatever you want to call them, are now taken off of all the spindles. So if you noticed on there, I've taken and I've written OK. You can see down the bottom here. So the 97 spindles itself, they spin pretty freely. They feel good. The 95, I have one that doesn't spin at all, and the other one spins okay. So what I'm going to do is take the 97 spindles off the 97 hubs, or hubs off spindles, however you want to call it, and take the 97 dust rotor covers that I just cut off, doing the rivets, and take the hubs and then I'm going to put them on the 9495. They're all interchangeable and I'm going to take the good parts, put them with the good spindles and the good, uh, good dust covers and that. Now if you don't have a drill press like I did to take this off, 
There is another way to do it. You can take a hacksaw or a Dremel with this small little cutoff wheel. And I did do both of these to try them uh, to cut off the back side of the rivet and then use a punch going down into it, pushing from the outside in. Uh, so you cut off the back, punch it towards the head, and that will push it out. And then you can take them off. So if you don't have a drill press and you want to try just a hacksaw or a cutoff wheel, that makes it maybe easier. And I think it is probably easier based on this. Getting these things chucked up for a drill press to go linearly straight down really was a bit, kind of a eh, bad idea. And the next piece on this is to take off the hubs. And on these, once you take the uh, black dust cover off, which is this, once you take this cover off, you have a nut in here. Now, these are one-time use only, so you will need to replace these, and thankfully they are offered uh, in many places. You can just order some parts there that are taken on and off that have prevailing uh, torque on them. And these are on there massively. They're like 220 foot-pounds, so you need at least an impact. Um, so I'm using my impact on this, and it's a 36 millimeter socket, so it's a big sucker. You can buy them individually, or I went to a place and just got a set of front wheel drive hubs and it was about 30 bucks with discount or whatever so however you want to do it there's your option so i did mention that uh 36 will go on here on the stock pieces of 35 will fit but on the replacements that you can buy uh, they actually do require a 36 so a 36 should work on both and uh if you get them in a set where you got a 35 and a 36 you got both there, so it doesn't really matter. Now the next piece here, now that I have all of these um, together and taken off, what I'm going to do is take off all the hubs and the spindles and that, and then I'm going to soak them in some rust corrosion pieces. So you can kind of see they're scaly in that. Really, before I put these on, I'm just going to go ahead and soak them. Uh, I think I'm going to get some stuff ordered. So I'm going to do that. And then I can start getting together all the pieces to be able to put it on with the front suspension and get everything together. Okay, so now that I've got everything taken apart, I took the time to soak these uh, spindles in evaporust. Now, it took me a couple days on each one, and I also did the set of the 96 to 04. So I had four spindles done in the same three and a half gallon bucket. Now, look how these things came out. Wow, huh? Hard to believe those are all rusty. Now, in order to assemble the spindles back together, I need to put the dust covers back on. And rather than doing rib nuts or rivets or anything else, I'm just going to use some of these screws. These are the same ones I used on the wide body. So these are the quarter by 20, two inch long. And I know I need to cut them down to about three quarters of an inch or less. I'm also going to use just some uh, nylock nuts that I bought from the local hardware store. These are pretty cheap. These are about a buck for a couple of them. So... Get six of them, split them in half, so three goes to one side, three goes to the other, and that way your dust covers can go on and easily come back off. Now, the last thing to mention for this on the spindles itself, you've got to be cognizant of what ball joints you're going to use in your lower control arms. If you're going to change on the Fox over to the SN95, you won't have any issues using the same uh, cotter and pin and the nut and everything else. If you're going to stay with the Fox body, lower ball joint you need to put it either in a spacer or a washer stack so it needs to be about a third of an inch a 0.33 which is a third of an inch in there so i'm going to use a washer stack so i went to the hardware store and got a stack of washers now five of these is about 0.35 which is okay i've already test fit it and these are about an inch and a half diameter od and then i've just kind of uh, used a bit to drive out the center just to fit. Now these are about 5 eighths going through here. So at this point, I really just need to stop talking and start assembling to get able to get the uh, spindles on the car, get the front suspension back on the car itself, and then uh, get over to the wiring, which as you're going to see is going to be quite the task. So that's it for this time. If you guys have any questions on doing a set of five lug spindles, uh, using the evaporust or anything else, let me know. Otherwise, Drop a dime. We'll see you next time.